Hello all, welcome to this video lecture on solar energy module 3 of energy engineering. In this uh, module, we understand about the fundamentals of solar energy, the solar radiation, the estimation of solar radiation on horizontal and inclined surfaces, and then measurement of solar radiation data. Then uh, we understand about solar thermal systems, uh, the application of uh, the solar energy. Uh, into these thermal systems that is the flat plate collector, evacuated tube collector, then solar air collector, solar concentrator, solar distillation, solar cooker, refrigeration and air conditioning and then thermal energy storage systems. Further, uh, we understand about the solar photovoltaic systems with the introduction, the solar cell fundamentals, characteristics and its classification and uh, how a solar cell uh, works with the module panel and array constructions then we understand about the photovoltaic thermal systems in this video you understand about uh, the solar energy fundamentals the solar thermal systems and the solar photovoltaic systems let's begin With uh, the uh, demand growing exponentially, uh, there is also a rapid depletion of fossil fuels and with the continuous uh, use of uh, these fossil fuels, there is an issue of pollution and the prices of uh, the power generation have always been uh, increasing. So, hence uh, renewable energy, that too in particular solar energy is uh, focused on. The solar energy is derived from the sun's radiation and can be converted directly or indirectly to other forms of energy such as heat and electricity. Uh, there are two uh, methods of uh, usage of solar energy, the direct and the indirect. So the direct consists of thermal or photovoltaic whereas the indirect methods include water, wind, biomass, wave, ocean temperature. Hence, it is often referred as uh, the other forms of energy being indirect forms of solar energy. Uh, the sun basically emits uh, the radiation uh, comprising of uh, infrared, visible and uh, ultraviolet radiation. The amount of uh, this radiation incident depends on the location, time and also the season. So, solar energy, this incident solar energy can be utilized in uh, two forms that is the heat and light. The heat part is utilized in all the thermal applications such as water heaters, production of steam, etc. The light part is utilized to generate electricity in a photovoltaic cell or a PV cell. And further, the solar radiation that is received at the earth's surface is entirely different that is uh, available uh, from the atmosphere uh, and this is uh, attributed to uh, reasons such as absorption and scattering and uh, absorption occurs primarily because of the presence of ozone and water vapor in the atmosphere and the scattering occurs due to gaseous molecules as well as particulate matter that are present in the atmosphere. So, if we consider 100% of the incoming solar radiation, only 46% is available uh, to be absorbed at the ground level. So, the solar radiation that has been absorbed or scattered and reaches the ground directly from the sun is called the direct radiation or the beam radiation. And uh, the radiation received at the earth's surface that is uh, uh, reflected and scattered is called diffused radiation. So, beam and uh, diffused radiation uh, is summed up and referred as either total or global radiation. So, this is often sometimes referred to as insulation at that particular point. So, uh, the direct radiation also known as beam radiation, diffused radiation and then the sum of uh, direct or beam plus the diffuse is known as total or global radiation. Uh, there are base few instruments which are available for the measurement of solar radiation that is received on the earth. So, the first one is a pyranometer which measures the total or the global solar radiation. 
in in its appearance it looks something like these and it we use a pyre heliometer which measures the beam radiation and the representational images are as shown the third is a shading ring it is a slight variation in a pyranometer it is used to measure the diffuse radiation so how does this pyranometer work it basically has hot junctions arranged in the form of a circular disc uh, you can see here uh, this uh, 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 disc is coated with a special black layer having high absorptivity and uh, this uh, uh, layer is uh, surrounded by two concentric hemisphere glass which is uh, used to protect the uh, disc from the weather uh, changes and the accuracy of these pyranometer is usually of the order of 2% and uh, how does this work basically the black surface gets heated up when it is exposed to the solar radiation its temperature increases uh, uh, such that the rate of heat gain is equal to rate of heat loss and uh, the hot junctions are attached to this uh, back surface until the cold junction receives uh, or placed uh, in such a way that they do not receive any solar radiation so as a res result an emf is generated which can be read uh, and recorded and integrated over a period of time which thus finally measures the global radiation so uh, it looks this there are thermophile sensors which are arranged on a glass dome you can see the glass dome here and uh, there is an enclosure which contains uh, all this set complete setup how does it work the position of these seven thermopiles in combination with the shape of the shadow mask ensures that one thermopile is always in the direct solar beam and one is in shade. So at any given moment at least one thermopile is measuring direct radiation and at least one is measuring diffuse radiation. So that is how uh, the total uh, global radiation is measured. Uh, a shading ring is, uh, as I said earlier, it is a variation in the pyranometer. It is used to measure the diffuse radiation. Uh, there is a shading ring R attached to the complete pyranometer setup, the pyranometer being the P here. This shading ring R is attached in such a way that the plane is parallel to the path of the sun's daily movement. It uh, uh, ensures that it shades the thermophile and uh, two clamps, uh, two domes of the pyranometer at all given points of time uh, from the sunshine. So there is a shadow formed of this shading ring R on the pyranometer and thus uh, there is only diffuse radiation that is measured from the pyranometer. The pyrheliometer uh, is an instrument used to measure the beam radiation. Uh, here again the same uh, uh, principle or the construction is similar to the pyranometer in the sense that the black layer uh, is attached at the bottom and this absorbs the solar radiation and uh, it becomes hot. Uh, this uh, uh, black uh, layer is uh, situated are located at the bottom of the tube so there is a tube here and the uh, sensor or the layer hot junction layer is attached at the base of the tube or the bottom of the tube and this tube is aligned in the direction of sun's rays uh, and uh, there is a uh, tracking mechanism usually which tracks the movement of the sun as the sun changes its path in its in a typical day uh, so, uh, this uh, tube ensures that uh, the black layer uh, receives only beam radiation that is the direct radiation and uh, although a small amount of diffused uh, radiation is uh, uh, incident on uh, this tube, however it is only within the acceptance uh, levels of the instrument.
Welcome to this demonstration video for the MS57 Piheliometer. We are going to show you how to install the MS57 on the Echo STR21 or 22G Sun Tracker. Before installing the MS57, you need to correctly orient your STR series Sun Tracker. To ensure you get the most accurate measurements in the Northern Hemisphere, we recommend carefully orienting your Sun Tracker to true north using a compass. There are online resources to help you check the deviation of magnetic north at your location, including the US National Centers for Environmental Information website. In the southern hemisphere, orient your sun tracker on true south. If you don't have a compass, most smartphones come with a built-in compass application. Once you are correctly oriented, position the sun tracker with the spirit level leg pointing north or south, depending on which hemisphere you are in. Place the pad plates underneath the levelling screws. Now check the spirit level and adjust the levelling screws until the bubble is centred neatly within the middle ring. With your STR series sun tracker properly positioned, it's time to install the MS57. First, remove the knurling nut from the MS57 mounting screw. Place the MS57 on the Sun Tracker mounting plate by inserting the clamping ring screw through the center holes. Reattach the knurling nut and tighten the screw until the MS57 is fixed securely. Connect the power supply cable to the connector on the Sun Tracker. When the power is turned on, the Sun Tracker will automatically start aligning itself based on the zero azimuth angle and zero elevation angle. It's then ready to start tracking the Sun. At the same time, the LED indicators on the back of the Sun Tracker will start flashing from red to green. This indicates that the GPS function is active and retrieving GPS data. The whole process normally takes about five minutes. Once complete, the green LED will remain lit. The final step is to make sure that the MS57 itself is aligned. Simply use the adjusting screws until the spot of sunlight, passing through the rain cover at the front end of the sensor, is centered on the dot in the small notch at the top of the sensor towards the rear. That's it. Your Sun Tracker and MS57 Piheliometer are now correctly oriented, leveled, aligned, and ready to deliver results with second to none accuracy, performance, and reliability. So, this video is about uh, a particular manufacturer of a piheliometer, uh, uh, and uh, the video demonstrated uh, how to align uh, the piheliometer and uh, get it ready for the uh, usage. The sunshine recorder is uh, another instrument which is uh, measuring the duration of the bright sunshine in a day. The sun's rays here are focused by a glass sphere onto a card strip held in a groove and uh, it is in a spherical bowl mounted concentrically with this sphere. So you can see this uh, groove card here in a groove. So, when there is bright sunshine, the image formed is uh, intense uh, to burn a spot on the card strip. So, the uh, glass pier ensures that uh, the sun's radiation is concentrated uh, onto this black strip and uh, the black, uh, sorry, the card strip begins to burn. As the sun moves across the sky, the image also moves along the strip and uh, the burnt trace length is proportional to the duration of the sunshine. So this again a representational image how it uh, is and the video here shows how the strip works, how the sunshine recorder works.
so you can see the burnt uh, strip uh, that is already burnt uh, due to the sunshine and uh, this uh, strip continues to burn further so that is how the duration of a sunshine is measured uh, the next topic is about uh, understanding the solar thermal system. There are various thermal systems uh, which utilize the solar energy to achieve the required temperature. So all the solar thermal systems convert the solar uh, incident, in energy that is incident into the heat. The first one is a flat plate collector, uh, the most widely used application. It uh, consists of a receiver that absorbs the solar radiation and then transfers the thermal energy to a working fluid. The working fluid most commonly uh, is used is water. Uh, uh, it is used as a heat transport medium from the collector to the next uh, stage of the system. So as the solar radiation is incident on the metallic uh, plate, uh, uh, it is absorbed and it raises the water temperature. The heat is transferred to the uh, heat transfer liquid that is the water uh, which is uh, in the tubes beneath uh, this absorber plate and uh, it gets uh, heated up and this hot water is uh, filled or store in a storage tank and is used later. There is thermal insulation in this uh, storage tank which prevents the heat loss and also even in the absorber plates, there is a thermal insulation which prevents the uh, heat loss from the back of the absorber plate and even of the side of the absorber plate. Uh, evacuated tube collector is uh, an improvement to the flat plate collector in the sense that it uses vacuum tubes uh, which is made of a glass and it has special coating, hence the name evacuated tube collector. Uh, the air between the gap is evacuated. So why this is done? This results in high level of vacuum which acts as a insulation and it minimizes all the heat uh, losses from the inner side of the tube. So uh, the black coating absorbs the uh, solar energy and transfers it to the water. The water uh, as it passes through these uh, tubes, uh, it becomes hot and it becomes lighter. So due to the natural uh, effect, it begins to move upwards in the tank. And uh, at the same time, the cold water comes uh, at the bottom of the tank and uh, the process continues. Solar energy concentrators are the devices that work uh, on the principle of uh, focusing the sun. Uh, these essentially make use of mirrors or lenses that concentrate uh, a large area of sunlight onto a receiver. Uh, this concentrated sunlight results in higher temperatures which increase the rate at which heat can be converted. So the uh, uh, efficiency is often measured uh, in terms of uh, the number of suns or the concentration ratio. The concentration ratio is nothing but the ratio of solar radiation that enters the collector to the top of the radiation that is received by the receiver. So concentrating technologies exist in four types. It is uh, either linear collection or point collection with linear collection being subclassified as parabolic drop then concentrating linear Fresnel collect reflector and then the point focus being a parabolic dish or a solar power tower. The parabolic trough contains a large U-shaped parabolic focusing mirror. You can see here. When the sunlight is incident on it, the mirror reflects the light towards a pipe which is fixed at the center and center of the focal point. And this pipe is usually blackened is coated with black to increase the absorption efficiency. The concentrated sunlight and the black pipes together contribute towards uh, heating the working fluid within this pipe, usually water or oil. A typical temperature achieved is about 300 to 350 degrees Celsius. Okay, take the natural heat from the sun. 
reflect it against a mirror. Focus all of that heat on one area, send it through a power system, and you've got a renewable way of making electricity. It's called concentrating solar power, or CSP. Now, there are many types of CSP technologies. Towers, dishes, linear mirrors, and troughs. Okay, have a look at this parabolic trough system. Parabolic troughs are large mirrors shaped like a giant U. These troughs are connected together in long lines and will track the sun throughout the day. When the sun's heat is reflected off the mirror, the curved shape sends most of that reflected heat onto a receiver. The receiver tube is filled with a fluid. and could be oil, molten salt, something that holds the heat well. Basically, this super hot liquid heats water in this thing called a heat exchanger, and the water turns to steam. Now the steam is sent off to a turbine, and from there, it's business as usual inside a power plant. A steam turbine spins a generator, and the generator makes electricity. Once the fluid transfers its heat, it's recycled and used over and over. And the steam is also cooled, condensed, and recycled again and again. One big advantage of these trough systems is that the heated fluid can be stored and used later to keep making electricity when the sun isn't shining. Sunny skies and hot temperatures make the southwest U.S. an ideal place for these kinds of power plants. Many concentrated solar power plants could be built within the next several years. And a single plant can generate 250 megawatts or more, which is enough to power about 90,000 homes. That's a lot of electricity to meet America's power needs. So that is how the parabolic trough system works. Uh, the Fresnel reflector is uh, very similar to the operation of a magnifying lens that uh, we all use in our day-to-day uh, usage. Uh, the front of the lens is not smooth and uh, it is made uh, into rough sections and uh, these sections are angled differently to increase the concentration and uh, the thickness and the weight is brought to a minimum at the bottom level. So uh, the uh, lens ensures that the solar uh, radiation incident is concentrated and is made to uh, incident uh, made incident onto a single solar cell and uh, the gap between the Fresnel lens and the solar cell is uh, uh, kept ensuring that the focal length is maximum a parabolic dish is uh, have, consisting of a two axis uh, mechanism that concentrate the uh, solar radiation towards the thermal receiver located on the focal point of the uh, dish collector you can see one large dish uh, and then uh, with uh, a receiver mounted and uh, the incident solar energy uh, from the dish uh, is concentrated and received onto the uh, receiver and uh, this is often coupled to a sterling engine and uh, this sterling engine is made uh, to work on a parabolic dish if you like uh, the content, please consider subscribing uh, to the video to get uh, the further updates. Moving on, uh, the solar power tower uh, is often known as central uh, tower or heliostat power plants. So here uh, it use, uh, there is a use of flat movable mirrors called heliostats that focus the sun's ray upon uh, the solar uh, collector tower at the top. The central receiver system uh, focuses this uh, concentrated uh, light onto a, a receiver and uh, this concentration is used to uh, heat up uh, 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 working fluid and produce steam and convert it to electricity. Air heating uh, is a solar thermal technology in which the energy from the sun is captured by absorbing the medium and uh, then is used to heat the air so there is a transparent cover and an absorber it is very similar uh, to the solar water heater uh, except here the working fluid is air so as the air uh, passes uh, through this uh, uh, collector it gets heated and the hot air that is obtained uh, is can be used for the uh, 
uh, it finds uh, its application in space heating uh, then agriculture drying then timber seasoning etc and also the advantage uh, the air heater offers is that the working fluid eradicates the issues of uh, the corrosion and next application is the solar distillation which is the use of solar energy to evaporate water and collect its condensate within the same system and this is made using a solar still so here the water is evaporated using the solar energy and collected as a distillate so it thus effectively produces distilled water after removal of impurities and even the sea water can be converted into fresh drinking water solar radiation that is transmitted uh, through a glass is uh, captured by a black surface at the bottom a shallow layer of water absorbs the heat which then produces uh, the water vapor within this chamber and then the water vapor condenses on the glass cover and uh, that basically runs down through the channel and is collected at the bottom of the tank the next application is the solar cooking uh, a mirror surface with high reflection is used to concentrate and channelize the light uh, into the cooking space the concentrated light focused on to the receiver uh, something like a cooking pan which receives the concentrated sunlight then uh, the conversion is often maximized by making use of uh, materials uh, that conduct and retain heat they are of uh, usually two types the box cooker and the dish cooker in the box cooker it is basically a rectangular enclosure that is insulated on all the sides and it has the glass covers on the top the solar radiation uh, enters through the top uh, region and heats up the enclosure in which the food is to be heated a typical temperature is about 100 degrees that is usually obtained inside this uh, enclosure the next one is the dish cooker the radiation is concentrated by a paraboloid uh, reflecting surface the cooking vessel is uh, placed at the focus of the mirror and is directly heated so temperature of about typically 200 degrees celsius is obtained in this dish cooker the next application is uh, solar refrigeration it is uh, an application which can be used for cooling or preserving the food uh, the absorption cycle is the one which is more, most widely uh, used method so it is based on the refrigerant uh, that is uh, concentrated by a liquid solvent known as the absorbent which releases the heat during the absorption cycle and uh, so simultaneously it absorbs the heat from uh, the heat during the evaporation and thus the net uh, effect that it produces is a cooling effect air conditioning uh, similar uh, system uh, it is operated using electricity directly from the solar radiation that is produced uh, the solar radiation system could be either a photovoltaic cell or, or uh, the uh, different types of collectors are used uh, it could be used in freezers refrigeration building air conditioning systems food preservation etc most system uh, most uh, suitable or most widely used system makes use of an absorption refrigeration so here the flat plate collector array uh, heats up uh, the water and this hot water is collected in a heat exchanger uh, simultaneously there is another working system uh, that is the regular absorption cycle so the uh, 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 the hot water is sprayed and then the absorbent is also mixed with this and it is collected as a condensate in the absorber and it is then uh, the system is utilized uh, one of the major issues with all of these solar applications is its variability because the sun's radiation is, that is incident varies so for this reason the energy storage system must be used the purpose is to store the energy when it is excess and to make it uh, available for usage when the supply is inadequate so energy storage could uh, thus be defined as the means of storing energy in a recoverable form when the supply exceeds the demand and it could be used in later point of time 
there are many forms of uh, energy storage thermal mechanical chemical etc we focus on thermal method the thermal energy storage is the storage of energy by heating melting or vaporization of a material uh, and the energy becomes uh, available as heat the usage of thermal energy storage system helps the plant to generate electricity when the radiation is not available it is of two types sensible heat storage and latent heat storage in a sensible heat storage uh, the storage is caused by a material to rise in its uh, temperature this involves uh, that a material does not change its phase here only there is a temperature rise the temperature of the storage material rises when the energy is absorbed and it drops when the energy is withdrawn and the quality of heat stored is proportional to the temperature of the rise of the material in case of a latent heat storage it is storage when uh, there is uh, essentially change of phase and liberation of electricity uh, for example phase change materials are the most widely used latent heat materials whereas pebbles rock bed are the most widely used sensible heat energy systems uh, the next concept is the solar photovoltaics which convert this uh, light energy directly into electricity usually also known as solar cells uh, the simplest uh, solar photo uh, the simplest photovoltaic systems that we use is uh, uh, the calculators which has the solar cell the, the sunlight is composed of uh, photons or the bundles of radiant energy. When this photons strike a PV cell, they may be reflected or absorbed. Uh, only the absorbed photons generate uh, this uh, electricity. And when the photons are absorbed, the energy is uh, transferred to the electrons uh, in the uh, solar cell. It's right from the cell uh, to the module, uh, how it is constructed and how the system operates. So the same uh, explanation. So, a single cell uh, 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 put in a module which is of many cells and then many modules make into an array and uh, this is usually wired in series or parallel combination as required to uh, generate electricity. The infinite power of the sun. So, how can we harness this power? These are solar cells. They can convert light energy into electricity. Each cell contains two pieces of silicon, one that is negatively charged and another that is positive. When light particles collide with the negatively charged silicon, electrons fall and get attracted to the positively charged silicon. As electrons travel from silicon to silicon, they create a current which we call direct current electricity or DC. This is the type of electricity found in batteries. A number of solar cells connected to each other and mounted in a frame is called a module. Each module is designed to generate about 30 volts DC. To generate large amounts of electricity, modules are grouped together to form an array. These are scattered throughout an open field to capture as much solar power as possible. But this electricity is still not ready for public use. It needs to be converted to match the type of electricity needed by home appliances. That's why solar power plants have inverters and transformers. The inverter converts the single current direction of DC electricity to multiple directions of alternating current or AC. The electricity then flows to the transformer and boosts it to 13,800 volts to reduce power loss when electricity is transmitted to far distances. From the transformer, electricity flows to a substation. This regulates electricity to usable 220 volts using another transformer and distributes power to homes. So that is how the power that is generated is uh, uh, stepped up in a transformer, then transmitted, uh, then received at the substation and step down and ultimately it reaches all our homes. Uh, the next is a fuller so solar photovoltaic thermal systems. These are typically abbreviated as PVT collectors or sometimes known as hybrid solar collectors. Uh, there are two sets of uh, uh, 
technologies uh, that convert solar radiation into thermal energy or electrical energy. So this uh, photovoltaic uh, thermal system is a combination of these two. Uh, by combining the electricity and heat generation, uh, these uh, technologies can reach uh, the efficiency better than either photovoltaic or thermal alone. Uh, it can be in uh, two categories, a PVT liquid collector or an air collector. In the liquid collector, uh, the basic water cooled design uses channels uh, at the bottom to direct the fluid flow uh, using the uh, back of the PV module. So, a PV module is placed on the top. The PV module absorbs the sun's radiation and produces uh, electricity and uh, this PV cells transmit the heat or the sun's radiation uh, into the uh, panel at the back uh, which has uh, the tubes. These tubes absorb the heat, convert the water uh, into the uh, hot water and so thus uh, we get both heat and electricity at the same time. In an air collector very similar principle instead of uh, the water the air is used and each time fresh air is drawn from the uh, uh, surrounding or the ambience and then is transferred and we get hot water and the electric sorry hot air and the electricity as well. Thanks for watching this video.